Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, we continue the discussion on uh, power series solutions to second order differential equations. And uh, before I proceed with discussion of solutions near uh, what we call regular singular points, I wanted to remind you uh, some of the findings for the Euler equation that you see on this uh, slide. So this is the Euler equation. And uh, we uh, saw in, a, in the earlier lecture that the solutions are of the form x to some power r, where r is a solution of this uh, initial equation that you see here. Effectively, this is as simple as substituting y equal x to the power r. And then you can see that r uh, satisfies this equation. So this is a quadratic equation. And depending on uh, the type of solutions this initial equation has, uh, we get different type of um, solutions for the differential equation. So let me summarize uh, all of them. If the two r's are different, uh, the solutions are of the form x to r1 and x to the power r2. And I'm using here values uh, for x in an absolute sense to allow both positive x and uh, negative x. Uh, so if we have two distinct R's, uh, the solution, basically the two fundamental solutions for X positive is X to the power R1 times X to the power R2. If the two R's are uh, the same, uh, one of the, uh, the second fundamental solution is of the form log of X, X to the power R, and the other one remains X to the power R1. And uh, finally, if R1 and R2 are complex, we can extract two real solutions that they're of the form x to the power lambda, where lambda is the uh, real part of these uh, uh, two solutions, and mu is the complex part. So we have uh, x to the lambda cosine of mu log of x, and x to the lambda uh, sine mu of uh, log of x. I want you to remember these uh, solutions for the Euler equation because we will see that um, uh, solving more complicated uh, problems and uh, uh, coming up with series solutions near a regular singular point will require as a reference point uh, the solutions to the Euler equation that you see uh, on this slide. All right, so let me uh, just uh, move directly to the main focus of the lecture today. And I'm going to go to solutions near uh, a regular uh, singular point. And I'm going to uh, uh, first, you know, I'm going to use, uh, uh, for convenience, we're going to use x0 equal to 0. So we're going to look for uh, a power series solutions in the neighborhood uh, of uh, this uh, point that uh, we're going to assume that this point is a regular singular uh, point. And um, uh, this is my second order differential equation. So I have to remind you what is a singular, regular singular point. Uh, so let me uh, first in, uh, introduce uh, little p of x and little q of x by dividing capital Q by capital P. That's my little p. And defining little q, which is r, divided by capital P. So we are... Uh, defining that x0 equal to 0 uh, to be a regular singular point when x times q divided by p, so x times little p of x, is a, an analytic uh, function at x equals 0. So it has a power series expansion around x equals 0. And also, in addition to that, x squared times r over p, which is x squared times q of x, is also analytic at uh, x equal to 0. So effectively, uh, I can say equivalently that x equal to 0 is a regular singular point when uh, th there are two series expansions for x times little p of x and x squared little time q of x. Um, and these two power series that you see here converge in, um, with some radius that I call here uh, little rho. So effectively, we have... Um, uh, a differential equation where, yes, x0 equal to 0 is a singular point, but the singularity, it's sort of mild, mild in the sense that x times p and x squared times q are analytic functions at uh, x equal to 0. 
So what we would uh, uh, like to do is uh, we would like to uh, compute the power series solution for this differential equation in the neighborhood of x0 equal to 0 with the assumption that x uh, times p and x squared times q have these power series uh, expansions that converge uh, for uh, absolute value of x less than uh, rho. Okay, uh, so we go back to this differential equation. So the first thing uh, you need to do is you need to take advantage of the fact that you have these power series expansions uh, that we saw in the earlier slide. So first divide by capital P and then multiply by X square. All right, so you will get an equation that looks like this. So you notice there is an X square in every term that I multiplied. Uh, capital of Q over capital of P is little p and, and capital of R over capital of P is little q. So I have X square Y double uh, prime plus X times X P X and X square Q X here. And I put this in brackets because uh, we're going to substitute x times p of x and x squared times q of x with uh, the corresponding power series that uh, we saw in the earlier slide. And, and here they are uh, again. So effectively, our differential equation becomes uh, uh, something that uh, looks like the equation that we have in, in uh, the bottom. Um, I am not going to read the whole equation. The only thing I have done is substitute x times p and x squared times q with the corresponding uh, power series uh, expansions. Uh, all right, so um, first I want you to notice that if uh, uh, these coefficients p1, p2, and etc., and q1, q2, etc., are zero, then this equation does look like an Euler equation, and it is an Euler equation. Uh, so. That's why I mentioned it is fundamental to have a complete understanding uh, of the nature of solutions of, for the Euler equation, because uh, our problem leads to the Euler equation if um, uh, P1, P2, P3, etc., and Q1, Q2, Q3, etc., are equal to, uh, to zero. So um, now, uh, in the Euler equation, we look for solutions of the form y equal x to the power r, uh, here, actually, we're going to look for solutions that they are combinations of these powers of x, so x to the power r, but times some uh, times some series expansion. So effectively, we will look for solutions that look like that. Uh, so we will look for solutions of the form x to the power r times this uh, uh, series expansion around x zero equal to zero, and if you do this summation uh, in a compact way. So effectively, you have summation of a n x to r plus n from n equal 0 to infinity. All right? You can see the first term is a 0 times x to the power r, which is here. The second is a 1 x to r plus 1, uh, etc. So we will um, uh, need to substitute this in the differential equation on the top of the slide and uh, somehow try to identify the coefficients a0, a1, a2 in terms of the coefficients uh, uh, p and the coefficients q. So let's uh, uh, do a little example first. Uh, so I'm going to consider the differential equation that you see there. And um, uh, this equation, you can write it uh, by uh, dividing by 2 uh, as uh, such. And now we need to show if uh, x equal to 0 is a regular singular point. Obviously, x equal to 0 is a singular point. So let's see if it is a regular singular point. So remember the definition. Uh, we're going to take uh, this coefficient minus x over 2 divided by x squared, multiply by x, and uh, take the limit of this as x goes to 0. So you can immediately see x squared and x squared cancel. So this limit is finite. Uh, and similarly, you can take 1 over x plus over 2 divided by x squared times x squared. Uh, if x squared and x squared cancel, x goes to 0. So this thing gives you 1 half. So basically, uh, the, uh, the criteria that uh, we had for regular singular solutions are satisfied here. And um, uh, uh, so both limits uh, are finite. And um, uh, so the uh, radius of convergence, basically, it's uh, infinite here. So we can uh, use 
uh, the previous um, uh, the previous facts that I indicated uh, on the slide that there is a power series solution uh, for uh, for uh, Y. So uh, now, if uh, before, if you remember, we had the power series expansion for X times P and X squared times Q. Uh, in this particular case, uh, we do have a power series expansion, but it has finite terms because if you notice, X times P of X and X squared times Q of X. Uh, they uh, uh, so x square divided by x square cancels. So uh, x times p of x simply gives you minus one half, right? And similarly, x square times q of x gives you one plus x over two. And again, you can see the one plus x over two uh, x square times q of x x square and x square cancel. So you get one over x uh, divided by two. So x times p of x and x squared times q of x admit power series expansion, but in this case, it's a simpler situation. This power series uh, have only a fine number of, of uh, terms. Uh, one has one term, the other one has uh, two terms. So uh, this is basically what we have, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, so the corresponding Euler equation, uh, if you remember, uh, uh, is... Uh, uh, x squared y double prime plus p0 x y prime plus q0 y equal to zero. Uh, and if I can go back, right, uh, you remember uh, on our previous slide, uh, this is the corresponding Euler equation, okay? When all the coefficients p1, p2, etc., q1, q2 are zero, this is the related uh, Euler equation to our problem. So if um, uh, I go back to this equation, it looks like this. And uh, we can actually uh, compute the solutions of this equation by uh, taking y to be of the form x to the power r. So when you substitute y equal x to the power r, you get an initial equation that uh, effectively, as you see here, it has two solutions, uh, two distinct real solutions, r equal to 1 and uh, r equal to uh, 1 half. So effectively, uh, now we will have to look for power series solutions for y to our differential equation at the top of the slide. And we will have to look for this power series expansion, one for them for r equal to one, and another one for r equal to, uh, to one half. So, um, so let's assume that uh, the solution is of the form uh, an x to r plus n. So that's our series expansion for y. If you start taking the first derivative, right, so you will get r plus n. And if you take another derivative, you get this multiplied with r plus n minus uh, 1. Uh, so what we need to do now is we need to substitute this in the differential equation. And uh, so we have 2 times x square uh, y double prime. So 2 times uh, x square y double prime. So this minus 2 uh, with the x square will cancel. So you get here x r plus n minus x y prime. So this minus one will cancel with the x. So you will get x to r plus n. And then you have uh, y plus x times y. So that's my y. And that's x times uh, y. All right. So we um, uh, basically have um, uh, written down uh, in a series form the differential equation. And um, let's see if we can uh, simplify slightly. Uh, so the first term I see is exactly the same as this term. Uh, the second, I don't see any change. Uh, let me go back. The, uh, the third term, I uh, do not see anything. And the last term, um, uh, you can actually see what I have done here is I did uh, sifting of the indices from n to n minus uh, 1. Uh, and um, uh, so the summation I has to go from n uh, uh, equal 1 to infinity. And you can actually verify this. The first term of this is a0 times x to r plus 1. And the first term here is a0 x to r plus 1. Uh, all right, so I shifted uh, indices uh, for reasons that you will see shortly. But effectively, if you notice the powers everywhere, is x to the power r plus n, 
and here the powers are x to r plus n plus 1, so I want to make it to also be x to r plus n, so I, I, I shifted indices by 1. So that's the same equation uh, as the one we had before. And uh, uh, so let me uh, try to extract uh, uh, various terms that involve the powers of um, uh, xr, uh, then the powers of xr plus 1, and then the powers of xr plus 2. So let's see how we're going to do this. Uh, let's take the powers of x to the power r. So you're going to have first uh, a contribution from this term here for n equal to 0. So you're going to get... Um, 2 times uh, r times r minus 1 for n equal to 0, and that's this term. And then you're going to get uh, minus r times a0 from the second term. And you're going to get an a0 from the third term. So this is all the terms of xr. And actually, the rest of the terms uh, in xr plus 1 and xr plus 2, you can leave them in a power series form by taking all of these summations all together. But you notice uh, the summation now is going to start on this first term from n equal to 1 because the n equal to 0 term is here, similarly for this and similarly for that. Okay, So um, maybe you can see exactly where I am going here. We have uh, a0 times uh, uh, literally the initial equation that we referred to before. And then we have the summation with this relation between a n and a n minus 1. Uh, inside the bracket that effectively is going to give me uh, the recursive equation I need to compute the solution to the, the power series solution to the differential uh, equation. So from if this series that you see here is equal to zero, all the coefficients have to be equal to zero, all right? And uh, if we start with uh, uh, the powers of x to uh, x to the power r, uh, we don't want a0 equal to 0, so what we will do is we will take 2r times uh, r minus 1 minus r plus 1 equal to 0, and uh, and then uh, this whole bracket is going to be equal to 0, and that's my relation between a n and a n minus 1. So recursively, we're going to be able to actually compute uh, the coefficients uh, uh, one at a time starting from... Um, a0 to A1 to A2, etc. Um, so the um, uh, again, that's the same equation. So uh, the uh, uh, two R's that we get from uh, this term being equal to zero is R equal to one half and R equal to one. And then the uh, for each of these R's, uh, we're going to have to compute a recursive equation for the coefficients A n. And uh, let me see uh, if we can see what this recursive equation is. Here it is. Uh, so uh, a n times the big bracket plus a n minus 1 equal to 0. And uh, uh, we can write uh, explicitly with some algebra. So a n equal to minus a n minus 1 divided by this whole bracket. And some uh, simple simplifications. Uh, here is our recursive equation. Okay, so uh, from this equation, you can see you can compute A1 given uh, A0, then you can compute uh, uh, A2 uh, given A1, and because A1 is written also in terms of A0, so you can compute A2 in terms of A0, etc. So let me do all of this. Uh, we're going to have to do this for each of the R's, because you remember we computed uh, two different um, uh, routes. Uh, uh, r equal to 1, and and, uh, and uh, this should be an R2 equal to 1 half. Uh, and so we're going to start with um, the solution uh, 1. So the recursive equation, if you plug in R equal to 1, uh, is going to be uh, even further simplified like this. So if you plug in R equal to 1, so you have 2 1 plus 1 minus 1, 1 plus n minus 1, so it looks like this. And uh, uh, and here is some of the terms, okay? And I'm not going to go term by term. Simply, you have to start with uh, n equal to 1, uh, then n equal to 2, and you substitute a1 with whatever you computed, and a3 uh, in terms of a2, 
and A2 is a, uh, in terms of A0, so you can plug it in. Eventually, you get this nice formula that gives you An in terms of um, A0. And, and, and actually, you can simplify this equation even further by a little trick. Uh, multiply the numerator and denominator in, in uh, this expression for An by 2 times 4 times 6 times 2n, which if you look carefully, is 2 to the power n times 1 times 2 times 3 times n, which is n factorial. So multiply this uh, numerator and denominator. So the first thing you will see, the n factorial and n factorial uh, will um, uh, uh, cancel out, right? And then uh, in the denominator, uh, you're going to have 2 times 4 times 6 times 2n, and that actually will give you 2n plus 1 factorial. So you get a very nice expression that is much more compact than this expression that is given uh, as you see in, uh, in the first equation. All right, so the solution to the differential equation we're done basically is going to be uh, summation of an times x to n plus r, where for, uh, if you remember for our first solution, if I can go back, r equal to 1, all right? So we're going to uh, set r equal to 1. So the first term will be uh, a0 times x, and then uh, from n equal 1 to infinity, uh, with r equal to 1, you get uh, a solution that looks uh, nicely uh, as the compact form that you see uh, in this equation. Okay, uh, now you may ask, uh, okay, you computed the solution, and, and since we have not given you any proof that actually this, this series solution here uh, converges, can you actually prove that this uh, uh, series is a convergent series? And you can use the ratio test that uh, we have discussed in uh, an earlier lecture. So you can take the absolute value uh, of uh, an plus 1, xn plus 1, divided by an, xn, and if you... Um, take this ratio, you will come up that uh, the ratio is two times the absolute value of x divided by uh, 2n plus 2 divided by times 2n plus 3. So as n goes to infinity, you can see that uh, this ratio is equal to zero, uh, uh, so uh, which is less than one. So effectively, the radius of convergence for our series is uh, infinite. Uh, so, effectively, our solution y1 of x converges uh, for all x. Okay, um, now uh, we can uh, uh, try the second root, right? And, and again, I will correct this. So, this should be r2 equal to 1 half. And the uh, recursion equation, if you plug in uh, r equal to 1 half, uh, simplifies to something like this. So I'm going to repeat exactly the same process as before. There's no need to go through the details here. You can compute A1, A2, A3, AN. Uh, and uh, you can uh, get this uh, uh, not so nicely looking uh, expression, but with the trick that I mentioned before, multiplying by Q4, 6, 2N, the numerator and denominator, you have a much nicer expansion, uh, a much nicer um, expression for uh, a n uh, that you see uh, on the right hand side of the equation on the top. Okay, so the second solution basically uh, looks like uh, uh, like this with my coefficients a n from the top equation and remember r is equal to one half. So if I uh, uh, start with the first term, the first term will be x to uh, one half. And if I pull x to one half outside, so you get something that looks uh, like this. You can see the leading term is square root of x. And um, I am not going to do the proof, right? But, you know, you can uh, convince yourselves that this series expansion is uh, also converges uh, for all x's. And, um, and actually, I do have the proof on the slide. So you can see that the radius of convergence for this is uh, infinite using the ratio test. So effectively, we have two fundamental solutions to this problem, and uh, and uh, effectively, 
uh, we have completed the solution to this uh, differential equation. So the two solutions that you see here are summarized again, y1 and, and y2. Uh, the, if you can, uh, because the leading terms are x and square root of x and they're different, you can actually uh, immediately see that these two uh, solutions are linear independent. Uh, if uh, you want further proof, you can um, compute the Vroschkin and, and you can show that it's not equal to zero. So uh, if you take a linear combination of these two solutions, that's the general solution to our differential, uh, to our differential equation. Okay, uh, so we have gone a long way and uh, for this very simple case and we computed near the singular point x equal to zero the solutions to this particular differential equation. Um, now, remember the expansion that we used was around x equal to zero, but you can, uh, with zero difficulty, basically you can do expansion around any arbitrary uh, regular singular point uh, x uh, zero in the form x minus, so a solution will be of the form x minus x zero to the power r, and the series expansion will be around uh, uh, x, uh, x zero. All right, um, so um, obviously the, uh, what we have uh, used in the previous example, we, uh, the, the roots that we got from the initial equation, they were real numbers and they were different. Uh, so let me just say to start with that if it happens that the two roots are the same, or if it happens that the root, two roots differ by an integer, a positive integer number, uh, then the solutions will be much more complicated than the form that you see uh, on the top of this um, on the top of this slide. Okay. So um, all right. So. Um, now, if, if the roots, by the way, it, it happens that they are uh, uh, complex, um, uh, that doesn't pose any problem. And actually, from the two complex solutions, you can uh, obtain two uh, real value solutions that they are independent by combining the real and imaginary parts of the, of the complex solution. So that is really not uh, any extra uh, difficulty. And all of the solutions come, in that case, will still come from uh, this form uh, and we have done something like that also for the Euler equation, so you can refer back uh, to solving the Euler equation to see how this case of complex solutions uh, will work. Okay, so let's um, uh, return to the general problem now. So I'm going to repeat exactly the same calculations we did for the example, but for the most general equation that is of the form y double prime plus p of x times y prime plus q of x times y. And you notice I have multiplied by x squared the differential equation. So I can use my expansions for x times p of x and x squared times q of x that converts for some radius uh, little rho. So um, uh, we're going to do an expansion around x0 equal to 0. And um, uh, the Euler equation will look um, uh, as uh, you see in uh, this slide, exactly as in the previous example. And we're going to assume solutions that they are of the form a n x to the power r plus n. Uh, and uh, similarly to the example, we're going to take that the leading term a0 is not equal to, uh, to 0. Uh, so we can um, uh, get um, the uh, solutions for uh, r. So this will be the quadratic uh, uh, equation that will give us uh, the, uh, the two different values of r. All right, so um, uh, let's plug in uh, the values of y and y prime and y double prime, exactly identical as in the example, but I am going to keep things very general when it comes to the expansions of p and q. So the expansions, uh, if, I, if you plug in uh, y double prime and x squared and this minus two will cancel out and then x times this expansion, so this minus one will uh, cancel out. So you get uh, this uh, nice, long, uh, heavy expression. And uh, uh, one of the things, obviously, you need to, uh, to learn, uh, if you want to do this carefully, you need to be able to multiply carefully uh, these um, uh, two series expansions. You notice I have a series expansion here times another series expansion. And literally, what you need to do is 
you know, you're going to write the series expansions in powers of X, you need to be able to take all possible combinations that contribute to each term in, in, in the power of X and uh, come up with a new series uh, from the product of these two series. So I am not going to uh, do all the algebra, but for example, if you take uh, the this uh, two products that we have and uh, you expand uh, the first series explicitly the way you see here, you expand the second series explicitly the way you see here, and similarly for the other two series, and you start multiplying uh, term by term, you can combine all the terms that there are powers that multiply x to the r, all the terms that multiply x to r plus 1, and effectively you're going to get something that looks like the equation uh, on the bottom. So you have an expression, a coefficient times xr, and a coefficient times xr plus 1, and then for a general term, um, for the co uh, coefficient for the power of x r plus uh, n. Now what is... Um, uh, nice is now we can um, go back to the uh, the three terms that we had in the differential equation. So we computed uh, a series expansion for uh, these products of two series and for this product of two series. So we can actually write the differential equation as the first term, okay, no multiplication of series here, first term exactly as is this, plus the uh, the result of the product of this uh, two series and, and another uh, result of the product of these two series. And again, uh, combine uh, from all of these three terms uh, all the contributions to x to the power r and all the contributions to x to the power r plus 1 and all the contributions to x r plus n. This is simple little algebra and you just have to be patient and do it uh, carefully, uh, and uh, uh, there is really uh, nothing fancy. So you can see here, uh, the x to the power r, you get it for n equal to 0, so you need the term a0 times uh, r, um, uh, let me see, for n equal to 0, you get a0 times uh, r times r minus 1, and which is this first term here, and then you had another term here, which is a0 times p0 of r plus q0, right? So we got all the terms to the power x to the r, similarly for this, and similarly for the longer term. Now, uh, if you look carefully at the equation on the previous slide, and, 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 and again, I don't want to um, uh, have to uh, spend too much time on, on uh, these details that you can study on your own by looking carefully equation by equation, but we can define uh, this uh, uh, function of R, which is um, really a polynomial, a quadratic polynomial. It, it looks similarly to the initial equation that we got from the uh, Euler equation. So if you define f of R to be that, somehow the, this um, uh, expansion that we had from the differential equation on the previous slide, you can put all the terms together in a very compact manner and you can come up with this beautiful uh, equation on the bottom that summarizes um, everything uh, uh, from our differential equation when we substituted the expansions for x times little p and x squared times little q and also for the solution y. So this is uh, the final equation. Uh, we have a series equal to zero, so every term has to be equal to zero. And you notice all the coefficients. Uh, so the, the, the first term obviously is going to give me uh, the solutions for R, right? That's our uh, key equation for computing uh, uh, the R's for this particular problem. And this whole bracket is going to give me a recursive equation that allows to compute a, a n in terms of all the previous coefficients and also in terms of the coefficients in the expansions of the terms in the differential equation that we use, these little p's and little q's that I had before. All right, so if a0 is not 0, uh, we can um, uh, compute uh, the uh, roots for r. Uh, this is basically the solution to the Euler equation. Again, this is why the Euler equation is fundamental to uh, our problem. Uh, 
uh, and you notice the leading terms here is P0 and Q0 that uh, you need to compute. And um, the, um, uh, this is a quadratic solution, obviously. And um, um, uh, we are going to consider different cases for the type of solutions that this equation um, uh, gives. So if if these uh, two solutions are real, we're going to assume that R, R1 is, uh, is the biggest solution, so R, R1 greater or equal to uh, R2. And uh, what I want you to remember is because our solution has a leading term that looks uh, y equal x to the power r. So these little r's here, r1 and r2, define the exponents of the singularity. They effectively tell us how singular is the solution y uh, around zero that we compute. So they are extremely important. They are the leading terms in the uh, solution uh, y uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of x. So the recurrence relation for the other coefficients is given by this uh, uh, nice formula. And um, uh, so it gives us an in terms of all the previous coefficients. So that's very nice. And um, um, uh, I remind you that when you're going to use this recurrence equation, uh, you're going to have to use it separately for first r equal to r1. So you're going to get one series expansion for r equal to r1, and then another series expansion for r, r equal to r2. This is how we get uh, to uh, linear independent uh, solutions for um, uh, our differential uh, equation. Uh, uh, notice if you're going to solve this equation for a n uh, in terms of all the previous coefficients, you need to divide by f uh, computed at r plus n, where n is an integer. So the key assumption to be able to do this is that f at evaluated at r plus 1 and f evaluated at r plus 2 and f evaluated at r plus n are uh, not zero. So, and you remember I mentioned before uh, that if it happens that the two solutions uh, for R differ by an integer, then things are getting complicated. And now you can see why they can get complicated because if R plus some N are, is, uh, is uh, a solution to the uh, initial equation, then this F becomes zero and we cannot use the recursive, uh, we cannot use the recursive formula. So um, now, if uh, we assume that uh, we have two real solutions and R1 is greater than R2, um, so for in the context of looking just at the solution for R1, so R1 plus uh, an integer uh, is uh, not going to give you, uh, 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 you know, it's not going to give you R2 basically, okay, for any integer n. Uh, so effectively, we can at least compute uh, for the first root uh, R, we can compute uh, the coefficients using this recursive relation, right? Um, uh, but um, uh, in, uh, uh, when we try to use this to compute the solution for R2, that may lead to problems because R2 plus N uh, can actually give us R1 and F of R1 is equal to zero. Okay, so, so for now, for R1, uh, it's not an issue because f of R1 plus n uh, is not going to be zero, okay? So we can actually use the recursive uh, equation. And uh, the solution will be what you see uh, in uh, this equation. So this will be the general solution. And for simplicity, I have uh, put um, a0 uh, equal to, uh, to 1. Okay, so we have um, uh, a combination of this x to the power r1 uh, times um, uh, this uh, series expansion. And uh, you notice um, uh, the coefficients a n, I emphasize, I put a n of r1 to emphasize that in the recursive uh, equation on the top, we compute these coefficients by substituting r equal to r1. And... Um, um, Okay, so uh, now uh, if we can uh, uh, substitute now on this equation r equal to r2, and let's say by you know that uh, r1 and r2 they don't differ by uh, 
an integer. So let's assume that uh, f of evaluated at R2 plus uh, uh, a positive integer uh, is not zero. So in that case, you can actually come up with uh, an expansion uh, for uh, y2 that looks similar, okay? So again, uh, when can I do this? I can do this when uh, the uh, R1 and R2, they're different. Uh, and uh, they are uh, they don't differ by an integer, okay? Because if they differ by an integer, uh, f of r2 plus some integer will give me r1, and uh, f of r1 is equal to zero, so I will not be able to compute the coefficient uh, a n uh, after uh, that particular n. So if that doesn't happen, my second independent solution looks exactly like this, okay? And effectively. I am done because I got two independent solutions. So let me summarize um, the, the findings up to now in the form of a theorem. So if we have a differential equation, uh, and I, here, again, I have multiplied the differential equation with x squared, uh, so I can, uh, uh, you know, uh, use the, uh, the analytic form of uh, x times p and x squared times q that uh, there are series that converge with some radius rho. So if we have all of this, um, uh, so rho here is the minimum radius of convergence for this two power series. Um, so we get uh, two solutions from the initial equation that you see at the end of this uh, slide. And um, now uh, we, uh, the first case we consider up to now is that the two solutions are uh, real. Uh, and uh, R1 is greater or equal to R2. And uh, in this case, we uh, have shown that uh, there is a solution, Y1, that looks like this, okay? And by the way, you notice I have uh, uh, done an extra step here. I expanded uh, the solution uh, to, I wrote the solution in a form that is valid for both positive X and negative X. But you notice this uh, series expansion uh, will be in the uh, interval basically from minus rho to rho, right? Because uh, my power series expansions for the coefficients have a radius of convergence rho. So obviously uh, the solution uh, will uh, exist within those uh, intervals that you see here. But again, I have an expansion that you can use it both for positive uh, x and negative x. And uh, here is the recurrent, uh, the, the, the equation that I use to compute uh, recurrently the, uh, iteratively the coefficients alpha n, okay? Uh, and, um, uh, and again, we uh, assume that um, uh, the, the two solutions are one or two, they're not equal, and uh, the, uh, they don't differ by an integer, and in that case, I can write similarly to y1 and other solution y2. Uh, the only difference here is the coefficients are evaluated for r equal to r2. So basically, this recurrent equation, you substitute your r equal to r1, so you get this solution. Then when you finish, you evaluate this for r equal to r2, and then you get another solution that looks like this. And this form, uh, the two... Uh, fundamental uh, independent solutions, a combination of which gives you the general solution uh, of the second order uh, differential equation near uh, the regular singular point x0 equal uh, to zero. Now, if it happens that uh, the solutions are complex, uh, basically you can uh, um, uh, use uh, the same uh, ideas given in this theorem and you can extract, you can take uh, uh, the real uh, and imaginary uh, parts, and basically you can combine them to get um, uh, uh, two uh, real uh, solutions that they are independent, exactly similarly to the way we uh, did this for the uh, Euler equation, so I am going to bypass that. Okay, so let me uh, now uh, discuss uh, uh, another equation as an example to see what happens when the two roots of the uh, the two roots of the equation uh, are 
uh, equal or they differ by an integer. I'm not going to do any proofs, but at least I'm going to give you the final results so you can use them in your uh, homework or exam problem. So we look at this differential equation that uh, you see in the slide, and uh, we would like to know um, uh, what exactly uh, uh, what is the nature of the solutions to this equation around x equal to zero. So if you divide by uh, the leading uh, uh, coefficient to x by one plus x, you get something like this. And let's see. Um, uh, immediately, you can see that the singular points in this case is x equal to zero and uh, x uh, equal to minus one, right? So we have two singular points, and let's see if these are regular singular points. So x equal to zero, if you multiply this by x and you multiply this by x square, uh, let's look at this, for example. So x square, uh, 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 you know, so you're gonna get x cubed, and on the denominator, you really have an x square. So the limit of this is x goes to zero is zero. And the limit of this is three halves. So basically, x equal to zero is a regular singular point uh, for this uh, uh, equation. Um, so for an expansion around x equal to zero, the uh, initial equation um, is um, uh, given by this. And by the way, um, I really haven't uh, proved this, but uh, you know it's uh, it's sort of uh, obvious. Uh, this p zero and q zero that you see in the initial uh, equation is exactly this uh, uh, limits that you see here. Okay, because if you remember, p zero is the first term in the expansion of uh, x times um, uh, p of x. Okay, uh, and uh, q zero is the first term in the expansion of q times q of x, and those terms define uh, the initial equation that uh, was coming up in the Euler equation as well. So uh, this is how the equation looks like. So we're going to plug in uh, p0 of 3 halves and q0 equal to 0. Uh, and this is what we get. And um, um, so there are uh, two solutions. Uh, one is r equal to 0. and uh, um, and the second is minus one half. So um, remember that these are the two roots uh, for the regular singular point x equal to zero. And there's another regular singular point that we computed. Uh, let's see what that regular point was x equal to minus one. Okay. So we may come back to this. There's another singular point if we want to do an expansion around x equal to minus one. But right now, for x equal to zero, this is what we get. So, uh, if you compute uh, using the recursive formula, the coefficients uh, an, and you notice I put an uh, of zero because uh, the first root for r is equal to zero, right? So, an of zero means compute the coefficients an for r equal to zero, and then the other r was minus one half, okay? So here you have x to the power r, which is x to minus one half, and here you have x to the power zero, which is one. So these are your two independent solutions, and a and, uh, combination of which effectively uh, will uh, give you the general solution around the point x equal to zero. This uh, series, um, uh, according to the theorem, basically converts for the absolute value of x less than rho, where rho is the smallest radius of convergence from the two series that we had for x times p of x and x squared times q of x. Uh, and um, um, so uh, in this particular case, actually, uh, the uh, smallest uh, rho that uh, uh, you can use uh, for the convergence uh, uh, of this uh, uh, to five of the power series for x, p, x, and x squared, q of x, uh, can be taken as one. And if you look carefully, uh, you can take it as one because one is the distance between the singular point x equal to zero and the singular point x equal minus one, okay? So, um, uh, I mean, you know that this, this uh, series expansions will blow up at x equal to minus one. So the radius of convergence uh, can be taken to be uh, you know, the distance from uh, uh, 
uh, x equals 0 to x uh, equal minus 1. So rho equal to 1 in our case, and so these two series converge uh, uh, in, um, uh, for uh, x uh, uh, less than uh, 1. So notice that um, the uh, expansion y1, uh, the way that I wrote it uh, uh, in here, seems to be converging for uh, every x, right? And, and uh, it is actually uh, bounded. So as x equal to goes to 0, this goes to 1. Uh, uh, but uh, this uh, solution for what y2 is unbounded, and the singularity, the leading singularity, is x to the minus uh, 1 half, OK? So uh, uh, y2 is unbounded, uh, y, y1 is, is, uh, is bounded. Uh, sim uh, the reason, again, is this power x to the r here for r equal to 0 gives you no singularity. So this series converges uh, and um, is not singular at uh, x equal to 0. So um, we can repeat the same things for x equal to minus 1. And uh, uh, things uh, may get a little bit uh, interesting here. So if you multiply, uh, if you take this is your coefficient p of x, this is the coefficient q of x, you multiply with x plus 1 and x plus 1 square, you can see that p0 is equal to minus 1, uh, and q0 uh, is um, uh, equal to uh, 0. So the initial equation in this case, um, if you plug in p0 equal minus 1, uh, it looks like this. And if you solve for r, uh, you get uh, r equal to r1 equal to 2 and r2 equal to 0. And immediately you can notice uh, trouble because uh, 2 minus 0 is an integer. So we know that uh, somehow uh, the theorem before and the solutions uh, that we have seen uh, of the form x to the power r times some series expansion uh, around the singular point may not be applicable for uh, both uh, solutions y1 and y2. Certainly the solution for y2 uh, would need, need to uh, be computed slightly differently uh, for this case with uh, r1 and r2 differing uh, by an integer. So let's, um, uh, so um, the solution for y1, uh, nothing changes. It will remain exactly as it is. Uh, so uh, again, uh, the r1 is equal to 2. So uh, you have a leading term, x plus 1 to the power 2. Remember, our expansion is around x equal minus 1. And this is my series expansion. And I take the first uh, coefficient a, 0, uh, to be equal to 1. Um, again, this notation here means you evaluate a, uh, a n for r equal to 2. Okay, so this is the solution y1. And uh, the solution converges for absolute value of x uh, less than uh, uh, rho. For rho is the smaller radius of convergence for the series representations about uh, uh, x equal to minus 1 for uh, x times p of x and x square q of x. And um, again, uh, we can take that the smallest row is uh, 1, because again, the distance between minus 1 and 0, exactly as we did before. Uh, but notice now that the, um, uh, so we, we, you know, um, uh, so we get something that, that looks like that, OK? Uh, interestingly, when uh, x uh, goes to minus 1, uh, the solution uh, y1 is is bounded. Uh, it doesn't blow up. Okay, so if you put x equal minus 1, you can see the solution y1 goes to 0. So there is nothing singular about uh, uh, y1. Now we have to compute a solution for uh, uh, y2. And, um, uh, you know, um, so we may or may not have a solution that looks in this form. Remember, for if there is a solution for r equal to 0, x to the r is equal to 1 times the series expansion, where these coefficients are computed by the recursive uh, equation using r equal to 0. This is if things were all uh, uh, normal. Uh, uh, however, 
um, you know, we may not have a solution that looks of this form. Um, so let's see uh, what actually the correct solution for Y2 uh, is, um, uh, is going to be. Uh, I'm sort of going to uh, give you, let me put all of these things uh, up. Uh, I'm going to give you uh, a highlight of the proof uh, when there is... Um, um, so in this particular case, I, uh, let me do the following thing. I'm going to hold this, um, uh, you know, the correct solution for Y2 um, uh, for a little while to tell you first on uh, how the solutions um, for Y2 is going to look like when the two roots are the same, because that is a little bit of a simplest case. And, and then once we do the solution for Y2, uh, when the roots are the same, I will come back to this and tell you what we do when the solutions for R uh, differ by, uh, by an integer. So let me uh, go back to this uh, equation. And um, uh, let's assume this uh, case um, of uh, uh, two equal roots. So let's say that f of R uh, is R minus R1 uh, squared. Okay. So basically, I have um, a double root basically equal to, to, to R1. So one of the solutions, Y1, will be exactly as we have done uh, before. Uh, the second solution, actually, uh, we have a form that looks as, as uh, this. And maybe this reminds you a little bit of the solution of the uh, Euler equation for the similar situation. So the first term is uh, Y1 times log of X. And the second term is uh, a power series, exactly the same way that we had for y1. Uh, um, and uh, uh, the only difference here is the coefficients here, bn, they're not the same as an. So the way you're going to compute this coefficients bn is you're going to take this uh, uh, big expression, including the term uh, with log of x and, and the expansion for y1, and substitute the whole thing in the differential equation and then compute uh, the coefficients bn, all right? So if the two roots are the same, you can prove uh, that um, the proof actually it's a few lines, but I don't really want you to be bothered right now, but you can prove that the solution for y2 uh, has a singularity uh, that uh, involves this term log of x, and uh, uh, plus this uh, power series that looks exactly like uh, uh, y1, but with different coefficients. Now, um, there is an easier way to actually directly uh, compute the solution y2 and this coefficients b1 at r1. And uh, here is uh, the relation of uh, bn with an. And uh, let me explain this uh, equation. If you remember, we calculated the coefficients a n recursively in uh, in um, uh, you know, in this lecture. So if you compute the coefficients a n recursively and you don't plug in r equal to r one, right? And you treat r as a variable, and you take uh, let me go back and you take the derivative of these coefficients with respect to r, and then you set r equal to r one, then that's exactly what these coefficients are about. So again. Um, you can uh, either plug in this whole expression for y2 in the differential equation and compute term by term what b1 should be, or directly use this and evaluate bn, evaluate the derivative of an as a function of r, and compute the derivative at r equal to r1. Okay, so uh, now... Uh, and, and uh, let's go back to the example that uh, we had before for uh, the regular singular point, uh, uh, the expansion we had around x equal minus 1. If you remember, the uh, two r's were differing by an integer. Uh, so uh, what exactly is the form of the solution? So uh, y1 is exactly as before, and y2 is given by this uh, uh, equation. All right, so let me... Uh, elaborate term by term. So there is a coefficient a here uh, that is not 1. Uh, apart from that, you have y1 log of x, uh, exactly as in the case of equal roots. 
and then you have uh, a series expansion that involves R2 and these coefficients uh, Cn. Uh, you can compute this coefficient Cn again by substituting this long expression in the differential equation, and um, uh, that would be the long way, but there is a short way that will allow you to compute uh, both Cn and, and, uh, and the coefficient A, and here are the two uh, uh, equations that will allow you to do this. So when you compute An, compute them in general as a function of far without substituting R equal to R1 or R equal to R2. So compute the, uh, the derivative of R minus R2 times An of R with respect to R. And when you are done, evaluate this at R equal to R2. This will give you the coefficient Cn of R2. And if you want to compute A, uh, uh, in the case that R1 minus R2 is some integer capital of n, uh, then what you do is take the n coefficient a n as a function of r, multiply with r minus r2, and take the limit as r goes to r2, and this will be the leading coefficient a in uh, this expression. So, um, a much more uh, elaborate uh, situation, uh, but this is what you get when uh, the, um, the uh, two R's differ by an integer that I call here capital N. Okay, so the only uh, issue here is, you know, when you compute these coefficients, because you're going to have to do differentiation, don't evaluate them simply at R equal R1 uh, or R2, Evaluate them in general as a function of R, then compute these derivatives, and then once you're done, uh, plug in R equal to R2 uh, to get the correct coefficient Cn uh, and A that you see in this expansion. All right. Um, now, um, in this uh, particular case, if uh, since we're taking the limit as R goes to R2, if this coefficient uh, happens to be finite, uh, then you can see that a is equal to zero, and that's why in a lot of uh, problems, this leading term uh, with the log of x is not there. So again, if uh, this uh, nth coefficient is finite, uh, you can immediately see from the second equation that the coefficient a comes to be uh, zero, so you don't really have this logarithmic singularity. So if I can summarize, um, uh, you know, by continuing on the same, on the theorem two that we started a little while uh, ago, when we discussed the case of uh, two real non-equal roots, we can now say if we have two roots that they are uh, uh, equal, uh, the second solution uh, will look like this. And again, I have expanded this for uh, to allow for uh, negative x, and uh, and similarly uh, the solution when uh, the two roots differ by an integer, capital N. Uh, the solution looks like this. And uh, I gave you formulas to evaluate the coefficients B, C, and uh, A. Uh, if you don't want to use these formulas, you can take these long expressions, substituting them in the differential equation. And in each case, you will get um, the um, uh, iterative equations, recurrent equations to compute this, um, uh, these coefficients. Now, uh, this expansion uh, again converts uh, for capital X less than rho, where rho is the radius of convergence for X times P of X and X squared times Q of X uh, from the coefficients of the differential equation. Uh, uh, and again, I emphasize converts at least because, you know, we have seen in one of the earlier examples some of these um, uh, solutions y1 and y2 converge for all x and they don't really have any any singularity. So the theorem says that at least you can guarantee that uh, for uh, absolute value of x less than rho, uh, these uh, solutions for y1 and y2 uh, converge. All right, so we are uh, effectively uh, done with uh, the uh, general uh, solution of differential equations near regular singular points. And uh, in the next lecture, uh, tomorrow, we're going to discuss about uh, uh, applying this to the Bessel equation and get uh, the solutions 
to Bessel's equation that are extremely fundamental in all branches of physics and, uh, and engineering. So until then, uh, I'll see you tomorrow.